What's up guys, it's Uncle Freedom, coming to you on the same glorious and well-deserved day off. Man, I have missed having a third off day in here somewhere. Um, it's been wild, man. Like, work as a cop is always incredibly busy, because basically we are paid to be involved in everybody else's bad decisions, and unfortunately bad decisions are contagious and on the rise, even in rural communities. Um, you never know what you're going to get when you go to work every day, which is one of the reasons I'm going to do the video on uncomfortable truths of law enforcement. And I really feel like that's going to help. I also was asked specifically to do it like, why would you ever want to be a cop? And um, maybe it's time I do that video for YouTube because I get that a lot. Um, and I get a lot of the people that don't know me. And I I think one of the coolest things I've ever had is the people that come back and say, man, you know, I hated cops until I realized y what you were about. And I'm sorry I treated you that way. And I'm like, cool. Like, that, that's it, man. Change the machine one day at a time. Um, but that video, I think I should do that. Let me know. If you guys want to see me do that video, I'd be glad to do it. I think it's important. Um, but it's time to talk about magazines. I did a video a year ago talking about magazines how many and it's time to do an update to that video not necessarily a lot's changed but some of my recommendations have and i feel like it needs to be said we have more and more gun owners all the time so i feel like talking about magazines is one of those important things from the uncle freedom perspective man it feels weird talking to myself in third person but it, it is important um, so something to keep in mind and of note for those of you new to the firearm world, especially new to the AR world, because magazines are so plentiful and inexpensive, you need to understand that they are absolutely a consumable item that is required for your stuff to work. They are absolutely consumable though. Like magazines fail all the time. And when they do, your options are to respring them or throw them away. Respringing them is more of an SHTF kind of world where we would look at something like that. Um, and it's not something we would typically do in our day-to-day -day life unless you just really have a specific attachment to a particular magazine body. Sadly, magazines are constantly the object of contention for overzealous freedom-hating politicians. Both sides of the aisle, I don't care. Um, I am a fan of freedom on this channel. I do not, if the Republicans are wrong, I'm going to tell you. If the Democrats are wrong, I'm going to tell you. And my guidepost for when those things are wrong or whether or not it goes against the Constitution. Because I love freedom. I think you should be able to do what you want as long as it doesn't hurt other people. Um, aside from that whole weird... <clears throat> attracted person thing. I don't want to get canned for this because sadly they run things. Um, anyway, we'll just moving on. They are constantly the target of, of, of kind of like overzealous politicians and state legislatures and stuff who insist on blaming an object for the problem and not what the real problem is, which is mental health issues the vast majority of the time. If you want to hear my real thoughts on that, let me know. I'll be glad to do it. Also, in case you guys have noticed, I've gotten shadow banned. So I guess I got popular enough <laughs> that um, they stopped pushing things. Um, that or you all just hate everything I've done for the last month. So depending on your platform uh, that you would be looking at, and this, this does apply in the AR realm too, because like if you have an AUG, there are some mags that won't work in an AUG. If you have an HK, it's some things don't work in HKs. Um, but if you have HK416 money, you probably don't care what I have to say. But magazines, right? Like, So depending on the platform that we talk about, and this is a lot more prevalent in handgun mags, which will be its own video. Um, you can buy magazines for really inexpensive money, man. I mean, we're, we're talking like I can, I can pick up all day long bug assault. If you don't have one of these, you are missing out. Um, but all day long, and in fact, I do. I buy these uh, 10 plus at a time. The original Gen 2 P Mag, 28 or 29 round mag YouTube. Um, I am always buying the Gen 2 P Mags. I like the Gen 2 P Mags, and I will usually buy them when Palmetto State Armory puts on a sale and has them for about $8 a piece. I will go in and buy 20 or 30 of them, and I'll just keep stocking them back because you can never have too many magazines because, after all, they are a consumable item that your stuff doesn't work if you don't have. Um, so you can spend little bits of money, or you can spend 
slightly more money to get into things like the new Lancer or the new uh, Magpul T Mag. My Magpul is going to be mad, or a Lancer Warfighter Mag. You can spend some money to get into some of these newer mags. Yes, this is the new T Mag that was just released like a day and a half ago, and I already have mine in hand. So good job, Magpul, and affiliate of the channel in the link. I love Magpul, right? Like everybody loves Magpul. So when we start talking about mags, though, you're going to have to make some options. Do you need a 20 round mag? Do you need a 29 round mag? They make 40 round mags. They make 60 round drums. Like, what do you actually want? I will tell you that drums are more trouble than they're worth. 40 round mags are very, very, very long, which is the reason you never see me with them. And the standard 29 round mag is amazing, but there is a lot to be said for having a 20 round magazine. Now you will notice on my 20 round magazines, I run extensions. I'll get more into the extensions in a minute and I'll tell you who I use and where you can find them. They all have a purpose though. Um, personally, if you're going to have a truck gun or you're going to be riding in a car, you're going to be shooting in the prone a lot, a 20 round or 20 round with a five round extension magazine makes a lot of sense. It allows you to be lower to the deck. It also doesn't hang on things. I will tell you in law enforcement, in my truck, this is the magazine that rides in my truck, um, complete with my ammo, which is the Hornady uh, 53 grain tap patrol. This is a copper expanding projectile that is amazing. It's basically critical duty for your patrol rifle and I adore the stuff, but this is what I use at work because it doesn't get hung on things. And I have a spare one of these in my vest as well. I really, really like the 20 round magazine because it does have a lot of options because I can solve a lot of things with 25 rounds. And my spare mags that I have in my, my kit in the truck are all full mags. Um, so then the next thing you have to decide when it comes to magazines are, do you want a polymer magazine an aluminum magazine or a steel magazine? And yes, they are different. Um, so the old school OG is this very loud aluminum magazine. Now aluminum magazines like OK Industries, Surefeed, those, those are great. Duramag is another one I trust. I do not like a lot of other companies for aluminum magazines. One of the companies I will recommend to you for stainless steel mags all day long, I don't like their aluminum mags because they have feeding issues consistently for me, even when I change the followers. So aluminum's the OG mag. They're very lightweight. They're going to hold the stuff that you need them to hold. They are incredibly durable, but they are light when they smack into things, but they're very lightweight. Your next option is going to be stainless steel. These are stainless steel mags, much quieter. They are heavier though, um, not ex not exceptionally so, but they are definitely heavier. But ammo storage components are ASC or MOSC.com, not an affiliate of my channel. They don't really know who I am and I don't care. I've been using their 20 round mags and DMRs and reloading platforms for years and I adore them. And their 30 round stainless steel mags are some of my favorite options that I can actually have to do what I do. They have excellent anti-tilt followers, amazing springs. And if you wanna respring your ARs of magazines, that's the company you need to go talk to. So stainless steel, and then you go from stainless steel to a polymer, right? So this is a Magpul Gen 3 window, Magpul Gen 3 20 rounder, Lancer L5 Warfighter 29 round mag, all the way to the brand new Magpul T mags or translucent mags. Um, these are all made of polymer. Polymer is gonna be highly resistant to chemicals and stuff, they're not gonna rust. Aluminum can corrode and it comes in contact with salt water. Stainless steel can have issues with galling on the inside. Polymer is very lightweight, incredibly durable, very tough. Um, and you get the perks sometimes that your stuff can be see-through and you can actually see what's going on inside of your magazine, which is one of the reasons I like Lancers. The one place that polymers do have a bit of an issue though, is there can be some issues with them cracking. They will crack over time. UV can have an impact on that, but the feed lips can also stretch. Now, one of the things that Magpul does is they will have these on the Gen 3 or above. And what they do is they actually take the pressure off of your feed lips in this magazine to not let the feed lips spread out and to not let them start to crack. But that can be an issue. It has been an issue in the past. Just to understand that that's one of those consumable parts. Lancer sought to fix this by including a stainless steel feed lip portion of their polymer mag. It's an add-on that goes onto there. I've never had an issue with Lancer mags. I really like Lancer mags. Um, I think they're a great magazine. They're, they're in my mind, um, like if you were to tell me like, hey man, you can have like, what's your pick for premium magazines? 
kind of deal. Like we'll get into my top brands in a second, but I love a good stainless steel magazine. I love a Lancer L5 Warfighter and uh, I love a Magpul, right? So it, it's kind of where it's at, I, you know, so you'll notice two through a polymer and none of them are aluminum. I like aluminum magazines, but they're never going to be my primary choice. Um, so with polymer, like I said, it's lightweight, it's very reliable. Uh, there can be those issues with cracking and feed lips. Aluminum, like I said, the OG standard, very reliable, very tough, very lightweight, but they are very loud and they have more feeding issues than any other magazine because what you end up with is the brass or sometimes steel cased ammo, if we're on a budget, can cause galling inside. And you can hear that grinding sound. That's the aluminum kind of galling on the inside. And then steel, again, they're some of my favorite mags, man. Like I love a good stainless steel 20 or 30 round magazine. The 20 round versions of these has some OG kind of vibes to it. They're the angle cut on the bottom. They're super sexy. Um, and they're, they're straight, which is just cool. But they are really good for hand loaders because they, they have a, uh, because stainless steel is thinner, it allows me to have a greater internal dimension that I can load out to. And I'm not limited to the 2.260 the way I am with other magazines. Not an issue if you're not a hand loader, it's never gonna be something you're gonna care about. But my hand loaders out there, just know that the stainless steel mags from MOSC are game changers for you as a hand loader. Um, so I'm like, so I said I talk about my favorite brands. So if you ask me today, like, what am I gonna buy? Magpul is going to be my first one, right? Gen 2, Gen 3, the T-Mag, right? Isn't that just cool looking? These are like translucent OD green, which is cool. And then there's Lancer's version of translucent OD green. Um, same ammo in both of them because I practice what I preach. And yes, those are little red tips because I have... VMAX rounds in all of my magazines because like I tell you good people out there, Full Metal Jacket isn't a freaking defensive loading. Fight me. So, when we talk about the mags, right? Magpul, man. Gen 2, Gen 3, I don't care. I told you I buy 20 to 30 of these things every time they go on sale at Palmetto State Armory. Link in the description, you know, if you want to support me. I do that because those mags are just freaking good and they're cheap and they're inexpensive and if I destroy them, I don't care. Uh, next to that is going to be the ASC or Ammo Storage Components, MOSC.com. I love their stainless steel mags. These are both 29-round uh, variants. I love their mags. Great followers, good spring tension. They're incredibly durable, very reliable, and their 20-rounders are the best DMR mag on the planet. And if you're a hand loader, if you don't have them, you're wrong. After that, Dura Mag. If I've got to pick an aluminum magazine, which I do in some cases because some of the mags were issued for work are aluminum magazines, but unfortunately for most people around, I'm in charge of buying that stuff, so we only have Dura Mags. Dura Mags are available in a lot of colors, though. Like I've got some in OD green, I've got them in tan, I've got them in blue, I've got them in red. Like you can get a bunch of different colors, and they're really, really consistent and durable. They use good followers, they use good springs very worth the money and number four for me is going to be lancer not necessarily the translucent ones the 20 rounders are amazing the opaque versions and fde and black are great but i can get crazy colors in these i can get orange i can get robin's egg blue i can get green i can do whatever red you know i've got the orange ones a bunch of other stuff they're cool as hell man i i, I think they're great and they've been very reliable for me i know some guys will tell you that lancers are terrible I've never seen those issues, and I have some Lancers that have in excess of 8,000 rounds through them, and they're still working just fine. Um, but their bad mags are a liability, and bad mags absolutely exist in the AR world. They are 100% a thing, and they are absolutely a liability to your freaking health. You will get unalived pretty quick if you use some of these magazines in a real defensive encounter. And unfortunately for a lot of people around... Um, they are always the cheaper options, and that's what people get. One of one is freaking Pro Mag, man. Friends don't let friends buy Pro Mag. This is a Pro Mag roller mag. So it's actually got rollers in the front and the rear to keep this thing from tilting. I will be honest, this one hasn't destroyed, but I have broken so many Pro Mags over the years, they're a waste of freaking money. Next up for me is going to be Amend 2. Great name, great concept bad magazines man they're just not good the polymer's not as good they will crack um they can have feeding reliability issues so no for me for those uh next up from that is hex mags i wanted to love these hex mags so much um 
but they have problems, man. They have feeding issues. I have trashed almost 16 of these mags in the last two years because they've had feeding problems or failure to hold bolt open, or I've, they've hit the deck and fired rounds all out of them. I, they're just a no-go for me. And last is the MFT or the Mission First Tactical. I've had a dozen MFT mags over the last two years all dozen of them are deadlined and in the trash. They're just, they're not worth your money. Yeah, I know I can buy an MFT mag for $9, bro. Well, if you just give it like a month, you can buy like Magpul for like $8, bro. So don't, don't do that, right? Don't, don't be, don't let being cheap be the reason that you don't have something that feeds your platform reliably. This is not the place where we cheap out, okay? These are inexpensive enough as it is that there's no reason to go cheaper, when you do this. Like for example, the T-Mags. T-Mags were released, I think, day or day and a half ago. Everybody's been waiting on these since SHOT Show. They were supposed to have been out for qu quarter one. Again, these guys are an affiliate of mine. Um, and no, that's not how I got these. I saw the drop. I got online. I ordered up half a dozen of them immediately and got them sent to my house. And just so happens they're in Wyoming, so it didn't take long. But Magpul's always innovating. They're always doing new stuff from the windows and the P mags to changing geometry. These have uh, over insertion stops back here, so you can't actually like jam these too far into the rifle. But this is an expensive mag for Magpul, and this is $21, right? Uh, Lancers are some of the more premium variants. So you're talking, you know, $15 to $18. You can get the windowed P mags for like $16. But you can buy Gen 2s for 8 bucks sometimes. Uh, but there are some upgrades that we can do to magazines if we want to change things out. You can do Ranger uh, mag pulls, the actual mag pull, which is how they got their name. You can do Ranger plates, which have a ring on them to get them out. You could do mag pods, which flatten the base out for use in the prone. Or you can do what I do, which is the worn scope bases are worn tactical plus five extensions these work on the mag pulls you just simply slide your base plate off same spring pop it on i've got a small set screw in the front of this guy that holds this guy in it adds some weight to help them drop free it doesn't add a ton of like oomph to my stuff it's very easy to get these out of pouches and index them they look freaking awesome and they are stone cold reliable and it takes my 20 round mag to a 25 round mag. Yeah, I know 29 round mags exist. However, they're much longer. So if we looked at this guy. So standard 29 round magazine compared to mine with a plus. This little bit of extra is a problem when you start working in and around vehicles. I'm just going to tell you like it is, man. So how many mags do I think you should own? A lot. All. The answer to that question is all. Magazines are consumable and constantly at the whims of political parties that would wish to ban them. They are also on the agenda of numerous states that have decided on a whim one day that a 29 round magazine was like 19 rounds too many. And they were like, you can only have 10 round magazines. And do you know what happened? Those people that owned those 29 round magazines got grandfathered in. So the answer to your question is how many is all. As many as you can get as often as you can get them. Personally, something that I like to do is every time I get paid, I'll go by my local gun store or somewhere else and I'll pick up two, three, four mags. Or I'll pop online, see who's got a sale. Gun Mag Warehouse, also an affiliate of the channel. Primary Arms, also an affiliate of the channel. Palmetto State Armory, also an affiliate of the channel. Magpul, also an affiliate of the channel. I'll pop over to one of those websites. I'll figure out who's got the best deal for what I want. And then our barely.com, also an affiliate of the channel. If you need ammo, that's where you need to be, man. They've got some smoking deals right now on some ammo. Um, fact check. Go for it. Um, I will always pop over there and I'll find what I want. And if I'm going to order some gun parts, I'll go ahead and add two, three mags in there. I do the same thing with like Glock mags because Glock mags are ubiquitous. But most of the time, it's always AR mags. I'll get two, three, four, five, maybe half a dozen, put them in my cart, add that to what I'm doing. And for like 55 or 60 bucks, I've just increased my capability by half a dozen reloads. So I love to do that. I do not put all of my mags into, into use right away. I will usually, typically for me, the way this works is I will take my magazine. Let's say this guy right here, right? I took this mag out. I knew this was going to be a duty mag. The first thing I did, I took it out. Before I switched the base plate, I went out and I shot 40 rounds out of it. It worked. I took the base plate off, replaced it with my worn base plate, and then I went out and I've used it in range training for four trips to the range, which means it got cycled at least eight to ten times. I know it's going to work. 
right? And then this goes into my rotation as a work mag, which means it does not see range time. It is a duty only mag. So somewhere between five to seven cycles of the magazine, I deem it to be reliable because if you're going to have issues out of a good mag, it's going to be early on. You're going to see it. Um, and then I will take it and that will be my work magazine. Um, and that is where they live. And then I have separate mags that are just for reloading all of my firearms, every firearm I have. If we looked at my duty rifle right here, this is my issue duty rifle. For those of you new, this is what I'm actually issued. It's a Ruger AR556 with over 10,000 rounds on it and some really cool spicy upgrades. However, there's going to be another video on this guy when I demonstrate my new patrol rifle that I've got going on. But this rifle has half a dozen mags. Every AR I have has between half a dozen and 10 magazines. And then I have the big ammo crates and I just stack mags in bags in there, man. I just keep them full. And then I've got an additional like stable of 40 magazines for AR. And those magazines are in my range bag or in my range case. And that's what I use on the range for classes, for training, for practice. When a mag goes down, much like this one did, I'll put a big X on it. I'll trash it out. Or I'll use it simply as a dry fire mag by putting a giant DF in fluorescent green paint, uh, paint pen. So that's what I do for magazines. So if you were saying for a baseline today, you were trying to have for magazines, I would say for your primary fighting rifle, I would say have at least seven to 10 magazines that you would bet your life on, that you've vetted out, you know they work. Take those seven to 10, load them up with your defensive ammunition, and that is your primary stuff. And then I would say have between six and 10 additional magazines that are just for training in the range, take to classes and get some use. And when they get beat up, whatever. And then I would always say, if you've only got one, have 10 more mags in bags sitting up, waiting to get rotated into the stuff. And you do something important to do to all your stuff. And you've noticed it throughout this on all of mine. I have paint pens on all of mine. All of my mags get numbered. And then I keep a log journal book with all of my numbers mags. So I know where those mags are, what they're loaded on. I know when they got put into service. And then as I destroy a mag and I take it out, I cross that number out and then I redo that number with a new magazine as it comes in. So guys, there you go. Riot magazines revisited for your rifle. Stay tuned for the pistol version because I'm gonna answer a question I get asked a lot, which are our aftermarket mags okay for handguns? Probably gonna be surprised by my answer. But guys, I am Uncle Freedom. Take care of yourself, take care of each other. How many magazines do you have? And what's your favorite brand? Do you know something I don't know? Do you also think that the 29 round T mag is sexy? Because I do. Anyway, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.